There's nothing so exciting in the world of archaeology as what's been found recently. Recent discoveries give us a chance to learn new information about the people who lived long before us and laid the foundations of the world as it exists today. With that in mind, let's check out the best recent archaeological finds. The Temple of Demeter in Crete is not a recent discovery. It's in the ancient harbor city of Phalasarna, and archaeologists have known it's there for a very long time. However, in November 2022, they made new discoveries at the site of the temple. A recent survey team from the Mediterranean University of Crete uncovered architectural remains that have previously gone undiscovered, including a semicircular structure of unknown purpose. They also found a collection of potentially valuable items hidden in the temple's sanctuary, including a vase inscribed with letters from the Doric alphabet. Some of the artifacts recovered by the survey came from the ancient Egyptians and Phoenicians, including figurines and ceramics, thus reinforcing the idea that the old harbor city was also an important trade location, but possibly confirming a suspicion that its inhabitants indulged in piracy and that Phalasarna was a pirate haven. That rumor has existed since 2,300 years ago, as have many of these artifacts. Phalasarna was a hub of activity until 69 BCE, which is when the Romans stormed the city, blocked the harbor with masonry, and then tore down most of its buildings. Energy bills have been increasing all over the world recently, which has got people thinking about how much it cost them to switch the central heating on. It may therefore be a good time to remind everyone that the ancient Romans invented a form of central heating more than 2,000 years ago. The system was known as a hypocaust, and an exceptionally well-preserved example of one was found in the German city of Bonn recently. Hypocaust can be found in several places in Germany, but what makes this one so unique is the fact that its original floor is still present supported by pillars of tiles that have been there since the Romans put it together. Archaeologists say that the hypocaust was once part of a stately Roman building, which may have been used as a country estate, known as a Villa Rustica. At present, the hypocaust can only be seen through a small gap in the floor above it. It hasn't been possible for archaeologists to enter it directly, so footage and photographs have been obtained by robots. The room will be temporarily filled with liquid soil for its own protection ahead of a fuller exploration in 2023. One of the biggest focal points of archaeological research in Egypt at the moment is the ancient necropolis of Saqqara, which is to the west of the Nile, just south of Cairo. The necropolis was once within the city limits of Memphis, which was the capital city of Egypt long before Cairo came along. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and contains more than 12 pyramids, including the oldest one in the whole country. In January 2021, it gave us the identity of a previously unknown queen who lived and died 4,200 years ago. The queen's tomb was found close to the pyramid of King Teddy, a pharaoh of the 6th dynasty. It was during the time of this dynasty that the pyramids were built, so it's a hugely significant period of Egyptian history. The tomb's existence was already known to Egyptologists, but its occupant's name was not. A funerary temple next to the tomb has now been found and excavated, and within the temple was a name. This female monarch, the wife of King Teddy, was called Queen Neret. Her name is carved on both a wall inside the temple and on an obelisk at its entrance. Our understanding of the ancient Etruscans who lived in Italy before the Romans is far from perfect. That's why discoveries like this next one are so important. It's a large monumental building, and experts believe that the Etruscans treated it as a sacred space. The building was found close to Tempio Grande in the ancient city of Vulci in November 2022. Much of what was once Vulci is now Lazio. How the building has been missed until now is a mystery, as it has near-identical proportions to Tempio Grande, also sharing its alignment. It was built around 2,600 years ago and may have been a twin building to Tempio Grande. 
Mapuche was one of 12 cities that made up the Etruscan Federation and was one of the most important population centers in the region before the Roman era began. Experts hope that the newly aged sacred space will teach them more about what the Etruscans believed in and also contain information about the dynamics of Etruscan settlements, including how they were separated into different functional areas. We still don't really know what Etruscan cities looked like, but this will help us build a more complete picture. When the ancient Romans went to see an event at the Colosseum in Rome, they might find themselves stuck there for a long time. All kinds of events were held within the Colosseum, including but not limited to executions, battle reenactments, sporting events, plays, and gladiatorial contests. Some of those events went on for longer than others. That's why it always made sense to take a few snacks with you, and some of the snacks the Romans took along are still there now. Archaeologists confirmed in November 2022 that they found tiny fragments of blackberries, cherries, figs, grapes, and walnuts in the Colosseum's drainage system, which has recently been explored by wire-guided robots. Around 70 meters of the drains are blocked, as they have been for the past several centuries. The current archaeological mission aims to clear the blockage, hopefully discovering several fascinating new things in the process. It certainly seems like the snacks the Romans indulged in were a lot healthier than the snacks we take to sporting arenas today. Coins from the time of the reign of Marcus Aurelius in the 2nd century have also been pulled from the drains. Our next discovery is considered such a big deal in Scotland that the authorities there kept it under wraps for a whole year. In 2021, amateur metal detectorists found a collection of more than 8,000 medieval coins dating to the 13th and 14th centuries in Dunscore, which is a small village in Dumfrieshire. It's been hailed as the most significant medieval coin hoard of the past 200 years in Scotland and is now known as the Dunscore Hoard. The press was finally notified of the discovery in November 2022. Most of the coins came from Scotland, England, or Ireland, but there are also some from continental Europe. The majority are pennies from the time of Edward I and Edward II, whose faces appear on the coins. As most of the coins are silver, the coins have to be classed as treasure, so technically belong to the crown. The crown may not exercise its claim, though, and so the coins might end up back in the hands of the detectorists who found them. They'll be paid a finder's fee even if the crown claims them, albeit not one that matches the full value of the hoard. Revo Abbey in North Yorkshire, England was built in 1132. It's an impressive archaeological site, but it's not a new discovery. However, the farm that was once connected to it is, Archaeologists were confident that they'd find something when they started digging, but they've been pleasantly surprised by the wealth and quality of the objects they've unearthed thus far. Rather than being the basic farm they expected it to be, it appears to have been owned by people of wealth and status. That assessment is based on the discovery of glazed tiles, fine pottery, and rosary beads. Historians have always known that the farm was managed by the Abbey, but they never previously have been sure of its precise location and weren't sure how much time or money the Abbey spent on it. For a medieval farm to have glazed tiles is almost unheard of, so it may even be that someone of high standing at the Abbey lived there. It's likely that the farm was established at around the same time as the Abbey, after which it stayed that way for 400 years until the monastery was dissolved by Henry VIII in 1539. Our next discovery takes us to Ukraine, where a cave complex full of mysterious hieroglyphs and symbols has recently been discovered at Voznesensky Uzvos, right in the middle of Kyiv. Experts think that the symbols date to the time of the Kievan Rus in the 9th century. The cave and its symbols were only found because housing authority officials had been sent to investigate a house that had been deemed unfit for human habitation and may require demolition. The entrance to the caves was found beneath the back wall of the property, which had partially collapsed. Dating markings that have been made on stone walls is never easy for archaeologists or scientists, but dating these symbols was easier because of the presence of pottery fragments found inside the caves. 
The fragments are from the Kiwi and Rus era, so it stands to reason that the symbols are at least that old too. The symbols are Varangian, which makes sense because Kiev was controlled by Varangians during that era. However, a question mark remains over some of the other symbols. It's been speculated that some of them might be more than 2,000 years old, but more research would have to be performed before that can be confirmed. Tattoos are very fashionable at the moment, but there's nothing new about them. Humans have been tattooing themselves and each other for thousands of years. Historians have wondered for a long time why so many ancient Egyptian women had tattoos, but a new theory emerged in November 2022. Experts now think that the tattoos were meant as a form of magical protection during pregnancy, childbirth, and the postpartum period. These tattoos were worn on the lower backs of the women, much as we saw in the lower back tattoo craze of the early 21st century. The conclusion has been reached after the study of six ancient Egyptian mummies who were buried 3,000 years ago in Deir el Medina, all of whom were confirmed to have given birth during their lives. The best preserved of the tattoos features a depiction of the deity Bess, protector of women and children, and a bowl that might have been intended to symbolize ritual purification. One of the other women also had a tattoo of a zigzag pattern representing a marsh. It's known that Egyptian women used the cooling waters of marshes to alleviate the pains associated with childbirth. Norfolk Island in the South Pacific is an Australian territory today, but historically the occupants of the island were Polynesian. In November 2022, archaeologists from the Australian Museum taking part in a planned dig on the island came across an impressive collection of ancient Polynesian tools, including hundreds of stone flakes and a pair of basalt axes. It's very hard for scientists to obtain accurate dates for artifacts made of stone, but we can be reasonably confident that these tools were made and used between the 13th and 15th centuries. That was long before Europeans arrived in the area. There's so much archaeological material at the site of the dog, the team working there is increasingly confident that there was once a Polynesian settlement there, but thus far haven't been able to find any evidence of houses or burial grounds. Only one Polynesian settlement has ever been found on Norfolk Island, so this would be a significant discovery if it could be verified. It wouldn't make sense for anyone from the other settlement to leave so many tools behind so far from their home, so there must have been a purpose to bringing them here. Our next discovery takes us to India, where more than 20 ancient Buddhist temples and murals have been found in the Bandhavgar Tiger Reserve. Archaeologists displayed a lot of bravery in making these discoveries, as the reserve is still very much active, and there were tigers watching their every move. The temples take the form of caves, which were carved between 2200 and 2500 years ago. There are 26 cave temples in total, within which are 46 sculptures, 24 Brahmin inscriptions, 19 water sculptures, a pair of votive stupas, and even the remains of some stone board games. They remained in use for a very long time, with evidence at the scene suggesting that there was a religious use of the temples as recently as the 11th century. Some of the water structures might be even more recent, with a proposed date of the 15th century for the youngest of them. Archaeological expeditions have taken place here before, but the one that led to these discoveries is the first since 1938. The most significant single discovery at the site is an enormous Varaha sculpture, which is likely to have been made somewhere between the 9th and 13th centuries. In 1440, a ship called the Skafto picked up cargo in Dansk, Poland, and then set off for Belgium. It never made it to its destination. We'll never know why it sank, but it went down close to the Lyskill Archipelago. The wreck, or to be more accurate, its cargo, has recently been studied by experts from the University of Gothenburg in Sweden. In doing so, the experts have discovered that there was quicklime on board. It wasn't previously known that this material was exported from Gotland during the 15th century. Other materials aboard the sunken vessel include tar, bricks, roof tiles, oak timber, and copper. 
In other words, it seems that the Skafto is transporting vast quantities of building materials from one place to another. Scientific analysis of the copper reveals that it was mined in what's now Slovakia, but that the bricks and timber almost certainly came from Poland. This might confirm medieval sources which say that Slovakian mines shipped their produce to Dansk via the rivers of the Carpathian Mountains, which was previously believed to be too hazardous and impractical to be true. We've rolled out the red carpet for you at Cine Mysteria, where you'll be gripped by the highs and lows of Hollywood legends. We dig deep into movie mysteries, unveiling the secret subtext in epic films and the failures that make franchises flop. It's a terrific tour of silver screen success and cinematic catastrophes. Subscribe to Cine Mysteria, where Hollywood's hidden stories come to light. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.